Hello there, a uh, very good evening and welcome to Let's Talk Politics. I'm your host, Eddie Lane, and of course, uh, this program, as I always say, is dedicated to highlighting the progress and development taking place under the People's Progressive Party Civic Administration. But also, we use the opportunity uh, to really respond to the lies and misinformation uh, campaigns that are being, um, you know, run by the opposition, APNU, AFC. Clearly, those campaigns are out of desperation. I'm joined this evening by the usual suspect, I like to call him, uh, Sanjeev Datadin, attorney at law. And of course, Sanjeev is a member of parliament of the People's Progressive Party Civic. Sanjeev, uh, it's a pleasure once again. It's my pleasure, Ed. Good evening to you. Good evening to your viewers and your listeners. And it's always good to be here. Uh, certainly. And I want us to, you know, get straight into this um, this evening. And, um, you know, a number of things have been happening in recent days. And I want to spend some time this evening to maybe uh, to talk a little bit, um, you know, about the, the, the the nasty campaigns that are that are being uh, run by the opposition, APNU, AFC, and they try to paint this picture, you know, somehow as though they are they are the victims of everything. You know, you commit crimes, you 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 collude in the commission of crimes. You know, you aid and abet people uh, to to commit crimes, and then you turn around and you play the victim. And that is exactly what you're seeing from the opposition. Um, and, you know, this morning I was looking at a brief statement from Aubrey Norton, you know, one of the wild men in the PNC, talking about, could you imagine on a Saturday morning, an executive member of the PNC made it it's his duty to do a video statement on the dismissal of three quote unquote independent persons, impartial persons from GCOM. So Aubrey Norton decided to make a public statement on the dismissal. The legal was done legally of Myers, uh, Mingo, and Lowenfield. And we recall Granger and the others outside of the courts uh, showing support showing support <laughs> what was funny i think it it, it 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 was either james bond or valda lawrence were appearing in one of the courts um around the same time but you were seeing granger and the others and Harmon and the others showing solidarity for mingo mares and lowenfield and not the executive I think she's the chair of the PNC, Valda Lawrence, and, um, and, and, and James Bond, I think is a former executive member of the party. And in the same breath, they are trying to tell us that mayors, Mingo, and Lowenfield are three angels who are somehow um, have had done nothing wrong and were being victimized by uh, the, 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 the PPP because these three persons are independent and in Kind of trouble. No, they're independent, but the PNC and this morning we saw statements. And I know, um, Sanjeev, that you know, Guyanese are breathing a sigh of relief with what happened on Thursday. And this is where I want to start from to address the issue of GCOM and a couple of other issues because there's a lot of misinformation being spread by the opposition. You know, <clears throat> during all this time. I've always been one to say that, you know, time will run out on everything. Um, short time left, time will run out. Uh, these are things that are realities. These three people, three employees, former employees of GCOM, they were involved in producing numbers that no one can explain. No one can justify. Mingo did it twice. He produced numbers, I believe, on May 6th and May 13th. March 6th and March 13th of last year. Strangely enough, the two sets of numbers that he produced don't match. 
Lowenfield did the same thing in June and July of last year. Those numbers also do not match. Now, there was one thing common in all of those numbers. All of those numbers gave the APNU AFC coalition a victory in the elections. The numbers have no basis in reality. They have no foundation. They have nothing that bears out to those statement of polls. Yet we see them being promulgated. Now, this is the same person producing numbers one time, two time, and they don't match. And then three times, four times, and they don't match. So Mingo has produced two sets of numbers that don't match. The whole country saw that. Lowenfield produced two sets of numbers that do not match. The whole country saw that. And none of Mingo's numbers match any of Lowenfield's numbers. And none of Lowenfield's numbers match any of Mingo's numbers. It was literally like playing bingo. There is no basis. There is no reality. There is no documentary underpinning to anything that they produced. Now, how is it that every wrong set of numbers that they produced favors one political party, puts a party as purports to propel a party as the winner of the elections when, in fact, they did not win the elections, when, in fact, the numbers, the documents, the statement of polls all reflect that the PPPC won the elections. How is that possible? Now, the reasonable inference to that is they were clearly influencing the election in favor of one party. And if you are influencing the election in favor of one party, if those numbers reveal if you are influencing in one, all the numbers seem to influence one way, then it is reasonable to pe for people to infer that you are siding with, with, with one of the political parties because your numbers have no basis and you keep putting forward various numbers, all of which have uh, indicate one winner. And then you have the political leaders of that said party making statements that say that what you're doing is lawful. They don't produce their numbers either. And they're saying that what Mingo did and what Lowenfield did are lawful. And they're saying that what they have done is in the excess of their duty. It ignores the Guyanese people are not stupid. We're not blind. We see things for what they are. Everyone, if you look at that, any independent person who looks at the production of these numbers over a period of time, several months, and the fact that they were all they were all slanted one way apparently, for which there was no basis for it to be so slanted, no basis in law, definitely. No legal basis for those things. There is no legal basis for the use of spreadsheets. And there is no legal basis for Lowenfield to, to conduct the charade he was about valid votes. Now, when you are an, a normal, ordinary citizen looking at that, and you're seeing it all slanted that way, don't you form an opinion? If every time, Ed, everybody, anybody says something, I slant it towards you and I say, well, Ed can do this and Ed can do that. Wouldn't somebody, wouldn't you find, wouldn't a normal person think, you know, he's partial towards Ed? And then you, on the other hand, make statements to say, to support what I say and support what I do, which is what was happening and which is what happened this morning. And I'm sorry to say that Mr. Norton is living in a parallel universe. No one believes that nonsense. No one pays attention anymore to those, those stories 
No one believes that dead people voted. No one believes that they were migrant voters because the recount was done in the full view of the people. And he makes mention that it was done in the full view of the people. And then he proceeds to identify errors. But those errors, the courts dealt with them all. The, the, so the, the, the thing that I don't understand is how long are you going to keep repeating this nonsense, this utter and total nonsense that has no bearing with reality, has no bearing with what transpired in those five months, except in a crazy man's mind. You saw what transpired. The whole nation did. We don't need to explain this in fine detail to people. They saw it. And quite frankly, the nation is ready to move on from this, these nonsensical stories about whether or not dead people voted, whether or not migrant people voted. You produced information that had no reality to it. None. In the information produced could not be supported. You know how they were to remind people. You know how the objections were being made? When they went, they would know who were the people who voted. Because in the polling stations, they would mark the names as such. They, you come in, they would mark off. They were calling initially a whole bunch of names of people who did not participate, did not claim to have voted. And then when they figured out that, that they were being caught out, they waited for the names and they would ask, did this one vote? Is this one marked off? And then they would pick from the ones that were marked off. In one instance, Ed, I remember vividly, they objected to more people voting than were declared to have voted in the box. So five people voted, they made 12 objections. I mean, this is ridiculous. Nobody believes what Mr. Norton says. Nobody pays attention to that nonsense anymore. And I believe the whole, and indeed, the international community, CARICOM, the whole world is satisfied that those elections have produced the rightful winner who is now president. And, you know, and, you know, Sanjeev, you know, there is a, you know, when, when, if you repeat, if you repeat, if you repeat, if you repeat, often enough, uh that you yourself tend to believe it is the truth i think we've reached a stage where the pnc and you know i i i, I avoid really saying ap and you afc because i think the afc is dead i don't know if they have any members still um maybe just in paper uh, because they've all been consumed by the pnc but they repeat this lie about rigged elections and about elections being fraudulent, so much so that they believe it. Imagine the recount match what came out in the SOPs. I'm hearing a kind of a feedback. I'm not too sure what I'm doing, right? But the the the, the SOPs and the statements of recount all match. Mind you know just. A few numbers here and there. The PUP has shown its SOPs. And as the, 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 the vice president says, apparently Harmon is sitting on the SOPs like, you know, there's a, a set of eggs really, he's waiting really on them to hatch. You know? <laughs> we haven't seen them. But <laughs> repeating this lie so many times, Sanjeev, that they believe it. Claiming that the elections were rigged and those lies, I think people have seen it the world over. The video was there. They attempted to rig the elections to steal the elections lie. So I think that argument no longer really holds water. People don't believe it for what it is, a lie. They have shifted gears and they have moved a notch further and to pull the oldest trick that they have in the book. And that is the trick of claiming 
of spreading racism and division among our people. That's the that's the trick. That is the one trick. So you got a guy at at, at um, Lanzan Survey giving away state lands as though he owned it. Um, Trevor Ben, and when the government took a position on Trevor Ben, they are claiming that it's 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 going after Afro Guyanese. You had Roxanne Myers, uh, Keith Lowenfield, and uh, Clement Mingo, and all the others at GCOM. There are still others who are being dealt with, I, I, I understand, who were yeah. nakedly attempting to rig the elections. And they were dismissed. And they were taken before the courts. You had Vala Lawrence, whose name appeared on the Region 4 declaration. You have Carol Joseph, I think is the lady's name, whose name yeah. appeared on the Region 4 declaration. These people are before the courts. These people are being dealt with. And you're hearing somehow there is, you know, the PUP is discriminating against afro guyanese If those names that I call are all afro guyanese what the PNC wants, if the people who I named just now are the people who committed the crimes and they are all Afro Guyanese, do they want us to find an Armenian in charge for the crime of an Afro Guyanese? It, it, it begs the question, Ed. The people who do the wrongdoing are the ones who have to be answerable for it. It so happens that in this particular case, these are the public officers that are of wrongdoing. And in the case of GCOM, these are the ones that publicly promulgated the wrongdoing of the wrong count and doing things the way they wanted to do. Now, who are you going to charge? Who are you going to have an who are you going to investigate? You could only investigate the people who did it. You can't go and just pick people randomly off the street and, and investigate them. Is there any doubt to any citizen of this country that Mingo was involved in District 4 in when he proposed to make a, a, a declaration of the result without there being the completion of the count? How did he know what the numbers were? We were all there. The cameras were all there. How did he come down? And, and walk into and propose to make a declaration on the basis of what? And then when he went for to make the second declaration, he, he used spreadsheets. There was a court order that clearly directed his conduct. He disobeyed it for as long as he could. Uh, they, they then conducted it in a manner that was far from being transparent. Who are you going to investigate? Are you going to... who? Who is this? Lowenfield was the man who was making the declarations. He was the one repeatedly making declarations on what he considered valid votes or not valid votes and took into account he, they were infected ballot boxes and all this, you know, chicanery. Who else are you going to hold accountable for this? It does not matter what race anyone is if you are the person charged with doing a job and you are not doing that job to the standard it is required and you are in fact going in the other direction and doing things in your job that you should not be doing that the law precludes you from doing then you are answerable whoever you are Whatever your color, your race, your creed, it matters not. The law doesn't see that. A breach of a statute does not take into account who you are. It takes into account only one thing. Did you breach the law or not? That is all that is concerned with it. And who were the people that were doing these things? Who were signing on these declarations? who were reading out the numbers of the declarations, who were putting out these declarations. These are the people who were doing it. Who was the person at Lands and Surveys involved in the land transaction? 
those are the people that you have to you have to hold accountable it so happens that they are afro guyanese well then so be it this is not directed to their race this is directed to their conduct and, and that's the reality you know and the only people who are racist will try to mask everything, um, you know, as, as, as being racist. And they've taken their racism further. They've taken the racism further. I understand, Sanjeev, there is this massive, massive uh, uh, anti-racism, some sort of anti-racism protest sometime uh, coming up soon in the U.S. against uh, the BBC. Well, we saw a similar protest against um, the Attorney General when he went to, to, to New York recently, when Rick Fordberg claiming that he was organizing this massive protest. <laughs> and he had, I think, 12 or 13 persons turning up. There were more policemen than, than Rick Fordberg's uh, protesters at that event. But interestingly... If he did not hold that protest, as I understand it, from the Attorney General, if he did not organized that protest there would have been more people walking on that street that day people were <laughs> they would they are ordinarily more people walking there going about their daily lives when he organized the protest there was less people doing that and about the other one that is being organized by what for whatever reason and whatever people think of it the people before you go on before you go on maybe too because i'm hearing a lot of stories about these so-called events being used to solicit monies from people so maybe well, whether or not it's one person or, or, or three persons turn up for the protest it had to go on because people have already put money to the thing and if 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 the monies are being used for other purposes outside of what they're being put for um, as I'm hearing, that these events are being organized as a way of raising funds for personal use by many of these people who are involved, including Burke. Well, I see, I saw on social media that there were persons who were um, saying that there was going to be a, pro a protest, and um, they were saying that donations and contributions were welcome. I don't know who those persons are, and I don't know what their connections are. But it appears that you might be right, that on social media, there are persons seeking to raise funds. If raising funds to have a protest, I understand from the local uh, uh, social media and the publications that I've seen around, that we have public officials from Guyana who are attending, and they're their expenses are in part being funded by their office, which I find to be strange if it is indeed true. Um, I don't see how public officials in Guyana with, with responsibilities here are served by going there and engaging in what is unashamedly political activities and then the office in which they are employed are expected to um to assist or, or to pay part of the um the expense i find that if it is true i find that it, it is indeed um very very unusual that a situation like that can occur but, uh ed you have to remember that part of the process of protesting an issue that is not an issue so you invent an issue to make it an issue then we all wondered why it was being done and maybe fundraising is the issue maybe that's the reason that it is being done i mean i don't know exactly what it is and further investigation will have to lead to who are the people doing it but we all wondered why and why an issue that is not an issue is being man, a manufactured issue if you like is being done maybe that's the reason maybe that's the 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 the, the driving force behind this and i i want to let, let I, because i don't want to spend too much time on this this nonsense that Rickford Burke organized 
But Sanjeev, there's an interesting thing about all of this. So there's this big announcement that this program is an anti-racism um, march against the PPP. And there is this massive involvement of the PNC and the APNU AFC opposition and parliament. But a bunch of backbenchers went. So my question is, Sanjeev, why didn't Harmon go? Why didn't Kemra Jamjitan go? Why haven't we seen Valda Lawrence? Why have we, haven't we seen Trotman or Nicolette um, Henry or Moses Nagamutu or, or, or Karen Cummings or David Patterson or even um, uh, the young lady um, Ferguson? You know why we haven't seen them? Do you know why we haven't seen them in New York? Uh, waving flags and, and jumping up and, 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 and eating and, 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 and enjoying themselves? Because they can't travel. They were the frontline riggers whose visas, whose visas were revoked. So big PNC event, um, march and rally in, 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 in New York. And we're seeing um, Eurito Fernandes, who can hardly speak in any case. I listened to a, a clip I, I saw circulating with her. All she talks, a bunch of rubbish at, at the event in New York. And a bunch of racists. Uh, well, this, this particular one, Hakeem Jeffers or whatever he is, uh, the, the U.S. congressman, racist, who's uh, Rickford Burke's buddy, out there talking nonsense. And I recall clearly Christopher Jones and um, Sherrod Duncan were bawling on the top of their voices. They're going to give back the U.S. visa. If you're going to sanction us, we don't want to travel there anymore. And I heard them saying, referring to the uh, her Excellency, the U.S. Ambassador here, Sarah, come and take your visa. What a see, Shanzi, a see you by Sherry Duncan throw back in, in New York. You know, these hypocrites. This bunch of hypocrites cussing out the U.S. and they're running to the U.S. because of what? Because maybe the monies that were raised for the protest, guys went to get a bite. But interestingly, the question is, where are the frontliners? Where is the opposition leader? Why is he not there? He can't go. Visa revoked. Where is Ramjatan? He can't go. Visa revoked. Where is Patterson? Where is Karen Cummings? Where, where, where are the others? They can't go. Visa revoked. They set a bunch of backbenchers, a bunch of hooligans. And I want to tell you that tomorrow's event, uh, as, or whenever the event is, it's a total failure because the people in the diaspora are reading the news every day and they are seeing what is happening in Guyana. They are seeing the progress in Guyana. What racism are they talking about? What racism are they talking about? The racism that they're talking about is because they wanted the PPP to keep their corrupt crooks that they appointed, the political appointees that they, that they had there, like the, 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 the Trevor Ben and those at GCOM and, and the, the, the director of parks, uh, the guy who was getting half a million dollars and living overseas. Um, that is what they wanted. So where is the racism? Brian Tiwari, and all the others who are benefiting. So this just this, this storm in a teacup that they are creating, I think the Guyanese people have seen through it. And the people in the diaspora have also seen through it. And they will not fall into that trap that, that Rickford Burke and the others are trying to create. Did I did I lose you there, Sanjeev? I, I'm not I, sure. I think taking the Chinese people for granted, they, they believe people are easy fooled and they believe are stupid. Everyone saw what transpired. Everyone is aware of what they're talking about. 
Everyone is aware that Guyana is in fact moving forward. There is much economic activity in every sector, Ed, there is economic activity. And we are seeing that they have fallen back into this issue where they will claim that there is discrimination. But His Excellency the President has said on more than one occasion, Guyana is open. If you have a proposal and you have a project, approach the government. Move forward with it. Anyone can do so. And you've been seeing in the press and you've been seeing in the news that there are many projects going forward. There is now um, Rudisa doing a $25 million facility that will assist agriculture. So there, there it, it is coming from, from everywhere. And there is no demarcation of, of who can bring those projects. The, His Excellency was very clear. If you have a project, no matter who you are, come forward. Talk to the government. Engage because Guyana is on the move. Guyana is moving forward, and if you want to be a part of it, then that's the way. You can sit and quarrel all you want about racism, but where is the evidence of it? You can't scream racism when you inflated the public service by hiring the, 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 the opposition when they were in government. They hired all these people in the public service. And if the truth be told, many of them didn't fit within the bands of the salary scales. Everybody was being paid $800,000, $900,000, $1.2 million, which for the job that they were doing and the salary scales that they were doing in many instances did not match. So how can a government be run when you have an inflated and a bloated public service? That is an expense on taxpayers month after month after month. This government simply decided that in areas where it was there were people hired as ministerial advisors who never went to work, didn't have an office. There were people who were, who were paid for various jobs and never produced any work, any report, any nothing, an opinion, nothing. How are you going to maintain that? Taxpayers deserve value for money. And you can't have an instance where you just hire people and they're there for what purpose? And, and you know, you know, Sanji, <laughs> when I remember some of the portfolios and the positions that some people had, we had one lady who was advisor on petroleum. And yeah, that's the one I'm referring to. I don't even think that she knew the difference uh, between coconut oil and corn oil or sunflower oil. You know, you have the cooking oil. Some people use coconut. Some people use <laughs> corn oil. I don't think she knew the difference among the three. But she was advisor on oil and petroleum. I don't know. I don't, I, 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 I don't mean any disrespect. But I asked her if they spell petroleum. Maybe she had a problem doing that too. But she was advisor. You had a man who was advisor on parks. You have a chap now in, in the in the US with this gang here. Um Ganesh Mahi Paul. He had about three or four government jobs. This man was being paid for about four different jobs. One with the, the um one with Guyana Chronicle as GM, one I think with the Ministry of Local Government as uh, something in the ministry, one at the Regional Democratic Council, or something else, then one somewhere else. The man had four jobs. One man. I don't know for the eight but hours these... he was, running, was doing an hour at, 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 at Chronicle, run over to, to this side, do another hour, run over. And when the man, the man lost all the jobs because he wasn't doing anything. And he was occupying the state, uh, uh, a house owned by the state. When the man get noticed to remove the man start crying and don't want to move. You take him four jobs and you don't want that's the kind of people you have. He's in New York. He talks about but but integrity and, and, and transparency and accountability. And you had me you had one man, Sherrod Duncan, when he was given the job um as as GM of Chronicle, 
how the whole big church service spend a set of money, remodel office, buy all sorts of fancy gadgets, five million dollars that he couldn't account for. Flying to New York, going to the interior all over the place. That is what you had. That is what you had. That is why these guys were holding on. And that is why these guys are fighting so much, Sanji, because they knew the gravy train was coming to a halt. They knew by March 3rd of last year that the gravy train was coming to a halt. And they were bawling. They were bawling. And that is why today they, I, I saw the video with, with the other racist uh, David Hines telling the people telling the people to undermine the government, to, to take, do what it takes to undermine the government. Dr. Walter Rodney is turning in his grave when he see what people who claim to represent him and his party are doing today. The racism they're spreading, the division they're spreading, and the hate they're spreading. But guess what? While they are busy doing that, the People's Progressive Party Civic, on the other hand, is focused on growing and developing this country for the benefit of all Guyanese. Look at the Because We Care cash grant that was rolled out, $3.2 billion, just two more regions to go. Every single parent with children in public school, regardless of the color of their skin, regardless of the texture of the hair, regardless of where they live, and regardless of who they voted for, they benefited. And every other program of this government all Guyanese are benefiting from and that's the problem with the PNC they can't stand and look at this government treating all and every Guyanese fairly and bringing benefits to them Sanji. you know it's not only that it's it, it's when you look at the 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 stance being taken about vaccines and they're saying they're not doing anything to stop people taking vaccines but I don't think they're doing anything to encourage people to in fact take vaccines and I mean, look, in Parliament on the last day, we had opposition parliamentarians arguing against our removal from the laws of cross-dressing. Now, there was a decision in the, in the Caribbean Court of Justice that said that that law is unconstitutional. It violates our constitution. So we have to remove it from the law. This is, this is a foregone conclusion. The court has already decided we have to remove it. So its removal is really um, a formality in our laws keeping up. So the objection to that is cross-dressing gives too much choice that society doesn't want. But they're not taking vaccines because you're taking away people's choice. I mean, it doesn't make sense. The position that they want to hold can't be consistent because you can't say that people have the right not the government doesn't have the right to tell you that you should get vaccinated while on the other hand you're saying the government has the right to tell you how to dress it, the, the two things don't go together you know it's either the government cannot tell you how to dress and the government cannot tell you compel you to take a vaccine the, the government is trying to do with vaccinations and I beg every person please get vaccinated we we are hearing and we are seeing and the minister has said he is treating it as if the Delta variant is in Guyana now it's everywhere in the in the US it's in Trinidad it's only a matter of time if it's not here I do believe it might be might be here the minister is treating it as if it is you're going to see the numbers going up and this affects the unvaccinated, but it's affecting children too. So the adults need to be responsible. The healthcare workers need to be responsible. I understand they have the right to decide for themselves, but you've got to look at the bigger picture and you can't be following Facebook professors. They, you've got to follow the advice of people who have, this is the best option. You know, this is the best way to save your life, your life, to, to protect your family, your community, your country. This is your time to do so. But, you, but it, it just goes to show that they're willing to argue uh, contrary to any position, any position. You want to say that 
The government should tell you how to dress, but the government shouldn't tell you to get vaccinated. The opposition parliamentarians make no sense. There is no consistency and there is no coherency in what they're saying. But Sanjeev, Sanjeev, why are you sounding as though you're somehow surprised that the opposition MPs aren't making any sense? Could you name the one occasion when they did in parliament? I agree. They don't make sense. But I also I also agree or I also have the position that when it comes to these vaccines, I mean, Ed, every Saturday almost that you and I are here, we're begging people to take the vaccines. And every week that follows, you see more and more people who come up with more and more fanciful explanations, quoting things and websites that are nothing to do with science, nothing to do with medicine. So maybe the, posi the, the, the position as it relates to that is we need to beg more. We need to try to get people who have this hesitation over the hump. They need to realize it will save their lives. I think, Sanjeev, we are going to get there. I think more and more Guyanese are realizing. They're realizing, look, the guys in Linden, for example, they were being misled. They were being misled by a bunch of people who were vaccinated. The regional chairman, I think it's Deren, Deren Adams or Abrams or something like that is his name, the region 10 chairman. The guy is vaccinated. Harmon is vaccinated. Sherrod Duncan and the others who are screaming and who continue to scream don't get vaccinated are in the US and they had to produce a, 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 a vaccination card. They had to. Yes, the, the argument is going to be, oh, they, they can produce a negative PCR test. Well, I'm telling you they're vaccinated. They are vaccinated, but they're encouraging you. And I made this point on Thursday, and I want to make it again. Sit over this weekend, you have Sunday, and I say to you unvaccinated people who are being led astray um, as a result of the misinformation from the opposition. And ask yourself these questions. Whether or not these guys really have your interest at heart, when they're going to encourage you not to take the vaccine, and they are vaccinated, and their relatives are vaccinated. Matter of fact, before their relatives reached time, the, before the age, the age limit was changed to accommodate some of them, their, their, their children and their wives and their husbands and their relatives, they begged the Ministry of Health to waive it to ensure that those persons were vaccinated. Do you think they have your interest at heart? Why would someone encourage you not to take a vaccine that can save your life? Look, we know how many people COVID-19 have killed. As a matter of fact, I should um, look at the deaths globally, and I'll give you the figure, right? The, the number of persons that COVID-19 um, would have killed so far. Right? In terms of deaths, you have what? You have 4.35 million deaths. 4.35 million people lost their lives as a result of COVID, including hundreds in Guyana. But there isn't a single case. There isn't a single case anywhere in the world reported of someone dying as a result of taking the COVID-19 vaccine, any one of the vaccines available. You, as the saying goes, although there is a, a popular saying on social media, you're big and you got sense. You should be able to judge that. You should be able. There is no one. And look, I don't know why this vaccine has to be. I don't know why. Because all of us as kids took our vaccines or our or, uh, measles, rubella. And we got yellow mark to prove it. <laughs> Everybody got vaccine. that mark. <laughs> Me too. We took our vaccines then. And we're still alive today. We're healthy. It protected us. It protected us. The world over is using the vaccine. Another single person has died or got sick as a result of it. Don't allow 
people who want to gain narrow political mileage to encourage you not to take the vaccine when their relatives and they themselves are fully vaccinated and well protected. We know and we agree and we confess that the vaccines will not prevent you from contracting COVID. It will not. But what the vaccines will do, it will prevent you from becoming seriously ill and ending up in hospital beds. Sanjeev, I know we have to wrap things up, but I want to touch quickly on one other matter quickly, and then I give you a chance uh, to give your closing comments. And that is the relationship, Guyana's international image, again, has returned to a place where the world wants to engage with us. And we are seeing the many engagements uh, between His Excellency and his counterparts around the world. Um, and we are seeing, I think, uh, this afternoon, the Office of the President announced uh, an official visit of the Surinamese President, who would have been here before, um, and President Ali would have visited Suriname. He is returning here shortly, which is another demonstration of the strong bilateral relation you're sharing with uh, it's a Suriname. And I know His Excellency has been engaging a number of countries around the world. I think he had engagements with the the uh, Haitian the Haitian leader uh, following, you know, who was recently um, who recently took over and he has been engaging. So the image and so while you have a bunch of guys running around like headless chickens, um, a bunch of losers in New York. Uh, creating all sorts of scare, uh, threatening, and you know, I hope Rickford Burke is held accountable, by the way, for that threat that he issued um, to Indo Guyanese, um, Indo Guyanese, um, US based Indo Guyanese businessmen and women in New York about destroying their businesses and about rushing into their homes and all sorts of things. That is the criminal mentality of these guys. While they are busy doing this nonsense, I think Guyana is again. Um, occupying that respectful place on the global um, stage, whether through our bilateral relations or multilateral relations, Guyana is again being respected. Um, and I hope that people at some point will be able to put the embarrassing and, and um, four or five months of uh, in 2020 behind us and to see Guyana as, it's, as a potential, uh, Guyana as a country that has a great potential for the people. So, Sanjeev, I'll give you a chance uh, to give me your closing comments. Ed, I would say to you this. It is important. It is more important, I believe, than most of our citizens realize that our standing on the international community is very important. It is important because when you become a pariah state, when you're off on your own, your leaders are likely to act without consequence because it's like unfortunately in the situation of like Venezuela or Cuba where you 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 don't have to conform because everybody is 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 against you and you take that as a given but you see you get better leaders and and you get better governance on the whole when you form part of a bit, the, the grouping of the world, we, we, we're not by ourselves. We, we have friends and we have by, uh, better relations with Suriname now than we've had in a long time. We have better relations with CARICOM. We have better relations with, with the United States, England, the European Union, Canada. We have better relations with these. And by having better relations, we are the, the corridors, uh, the, the pathways to assistance, to guidance, to, to exchange of ideas are open. And we also are going to be made aware that, look, in the grand scheme of things, you, 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 when you govern, you govern within a bigger structure. So you're not, you're not going to govern without caring about what is happening in the world. So it, it bodes well for our people. It means that our people will benefit from that. Then there come the whole issue of travel, your passport, requirements of visas. All of these issues will come up. And if your government is not at the table to be able to speak on your behalf, no one is speaking on your behalf. But how do you get there? 
You get there by being credible and transparent. And in your government and in your governance, you have to be willing to engage and you have to be willing to put forward fair and transparent ideas. Then is when people respect you. When you are not doing that, the international community will turn on you. We saw that during the five months. A diplomat, it was a diplomat who came up and said that Mr. Granger was referred to as a sanctimonious gangster among diplomats. That's where it came from. That's the original story of how that name came about. But these are what diplomats think of your leader, that he's a sanctimonious gangster. Why would they ever listen to him? Why would they ever engage with a nation that is led by someone like that? So we're finally back on a different path. We're on the world stage. We're making our mark. We are engaging with international companies and we're in, uh, with countries because of our resources. We are now respected a little bit more because we are more organized and our governance is far better than it was before. So in terms of that, uh, Ed, we are, it is chalk and cheese from what it was before to what it is now. We are on the right path and long may we continue on that path. Thank you very much, uh, Sanjeev. And before I wrap, I just want to take this opportunity, you know, to um, on behalf of us here and, and on behalf of, I, I think I can speak for every Guyanese, uh, express, you know, our solidarity with the government and people of Haiti, um, struck hey. again by a 7.2 magnitude earthquake um, today. I understand that the toll is currently stands at 300, um, and I believe there's still. I pray for that country, man. So let us and pray for Haiti. They, can't, they just can't seem to catch a break. It, it, it was 2010 earthquake, then a hurricane, then political turmoil. And now, there, and now I understand from the news just before we came on air that there, there is a tropical storm that might be a hurricane heading to which Haiti might be affected. I only hope those, those people are really struggling. And hundreds dead already. Hotels have collapsed, apparently. Um, yeah, so, so, yes, our thoughts, our thoughts and prayers are definitely with the people of Haiti. Thank you very much, Sanjeev. And to our listeners and viewers, we want to say thanks for being part of the program. Uh, we're going to be back with you on Tuesday evening. Until then, we encourage those of you who are not yet vaccinated uh, to do so. And uh, to those who are vaccinated, as well to ensure that you continue to take the necessary precautions. Sanjeev, it's a pleasure, bro. Good night and may God be with you.